Hi everyone and welcome to this uh, new workshop at uh, MVC Connect. I'm Madi, I'm here with Salil. Uh, together uh, we created MVC Connect, an online platform to learn, practice and share MVC. And today we are hosting Marianne van Dijk from Netherlands. We met Marianne through her uh, videos on her YouTube channel, Cup of, Cup of Empathy. And we liked her so much and the way she put the concept of, of NVC in, uh, actually it was the maximum meaning in, um, in a few words. And this is what we liked, and also the uh, the the images that she created through her words, like transform judgment into gold. I, I like it that very very much, and also I uh, I liked her examples. So after this uh, this workshop, if if you like her, you can go to her uh, YouTube channel, Cup of Empathy, and uh, and watch those videos. So thank you very much, Marianne, for being here today and sharing with us how we can um, create a request that we, uh, would make both our lives and the other more joyful. Thank you. Shall I just go ahead or are you complete? Yes, I'm complete. Okay, I'm cool. very happy to have you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Welcome everyone. I, I feel excited. I'm doing this for the first time. So I'm, I'm trying to see all the faces and to imagine who's there. Um, so I'm just going to assume that you all don't know anything about MVC. Maybe you do, but I guess it's always helpful to, to get to hear something a second time. So yeah, I want to talk about making requests because this is what ultimately is, I believe is going to move your life forward. Um, I just want to give a little overview of because ma making a request is really just just one of the four steps in MVC. So I want to first give a little overview before we really dive into the how to make a request. And in order to do that, I'm going to show you. Um, I'm just going to share. Oops. Yeah, cool. Okay, so maybe you all know this, but I'm just going to go through it quickly. Um, in MVC, we always work with four steps. So you're going to start with the observation, then you're going to share your feeling and your need, and then the request is going to come. And I want to really want to emphasize this because it's, we're all used to making requests in a way, but we're not really used to sharing, especially our need. And if you kind of skip this step, then it's going to be a lot less effective. So I really want to emphasize that the first three steps are really there to create connection with someone else. And also if you make a request to yourself, it's, it's made to create connection with yourself. And also um, if you know your needs, apart from having just the clarity of, of knowing what, what it is that you need before you actually make a request, it's also helpful because, um, I'm just gonna give an example of, of the four steps so, so it becomes more concrete. Um, a situation for me that's actually a real life situation and I'm also going to ask you guys after if you want to help me to make a request according to the, the tips that I'm going to give um, is that right now I haven't done any uh, kind of sports for about two months uh, so that's my observation the last time that I did any kind of sports is two months ago so that's a neutral way of describing what is my situation and my feeling is that I'm yeah, a bit demotivated, a bit um, worried even. And um, my need is that I would love to have some support and some, I guess, inspiration to start doing my sports again. So my need is that I want support in getting inspiration and motivation. But as you can hear, like getting support, it's kind of abstract, right? So it's not clear yet what, what I want concretely. And that's why we're going to go to the request. So that's just a little overview. And what I want to ask you is I'm going to share a lot of tips. And at the end, I'm going to ask you guys to, um, to help me make a request. So, yeah. Let me see if I've got anything. 
Yeah, so actually before I share the tips on, on how to make a request, I, um, yeah, let me think, where was it? So before I'm gonna share with you how to make an effective request, actually the question is when to make a request. And this is really after you found your need. And quite often I notice when someone is like, oh, I don't know what to request. Actually, I notice they are still, um, they're actually here. They're in their, their, they don't know yet how they feel or they haven't really processed or connected with that or they don't actually know what they need. So quite often, maybe if you're gonna ask questions later, I will actually say, mm, I think you need to go back to step one, two, three before you go to step four. Okay, so that's, that's that. Um, I'm just gonna go back to me. Can you see me again? Can you raise your hand if you see me? Okay, cool. Okay, so, um, and one, I want to say one more thing about finding your need, why it's so important before you make a request. And it's that if you know your needs, this creates many options for different kinds of requests. And this means that if one request doesn't work out, so say I'm asking someone for some, something and they say no, I can go back to my need and I can make a new request. So finding your need creates a lot of independency. So for example, if I want, want to be heard, if that's my need, I can make a request to one person to listen to me. But if they say, no, I don't have time, I don't want to, I can maybe be a bit disappointed, but I can still go back to my need and make a request to someone else. So that's where you can kind of, yeah, grab your power in a way, become more independent instead of, yeah, being completely defeated if, if one request is not, um, um, yeah, if someone doesn't say yes to your first request. Okay, and then one last thing before I'm gonna share the six uh, tips is that you can, and this is also about being more independent, um, is that you can direct your request at three different kind of people. You can direct it at yourself, so I can make a request to myself. You can direct it to the person that triggered you. So quite often when you, um, are in a situation that you don't like, it's because someone else did something that you don't like. And you can make a request to this person and you can make a request to another person. So there's always three, three people, so to speak, you can direct your request at. And this can be also helpful if you notice you are a bit stuck at focusing on one person to do what you want or one strategy uh, for, in order to meet your needs. So it can be very helpful then to just, as a way of practicing, you know, probably you will have a preference that this one person listen to you or this one person does this for you. But um, yeah, if you notice this, it can be very helpful to think of three, these three directions to, to point your, your request at. Okay, so now for these six, um, six things that you can look at before you, in, yeah six things you can look at when you're making your request that will make it more doable, more clear for the other person or for yourself, and more, more effective in general, more chance that someone else will say yes to it. And I wanna give a little overview of the six tips as well. Um, let me see. Um, Can you see now the Cupido? Can you raise your hand if you see it? Okay, cool. So I made a little acronym, the word Cupido, it's Dutch for Cupid, but we need the O, so I'm not gonna translate it. So each letter stands for one of the six uh, things to look at. So I'm gonna go back to the screen every now and then. You don't need to write it all down right now. Um, I think you'll have enough time during during this half hour. So the first one I'm just gonna is to make it concrete. So I'm just gonna go back to me. And so for example, say that I am having a webinar and I'm a bit nervous beforehand and my partner tells me, um, you know, don't be nervous, it's all gonna be fine. And I don't like that, that's my situation. And I'm gonna ask him a request and it's gonna sound like this. I want you to give me the space to be myself. And 
this kind of request, the risk of this is, is that, as you can hear, the space to be yourself, it's kind of abstract. I'm not telling my partner what to do exactly. If I would get a request like that, I would be like, you know, what, what do you want me to do? So it's very important to make it concrete. Actually, when I make this request, I want you to give me the space to be myself. I'm, I'm kind of sharing a need, actually. You know, the space to be myself could be my need. And my request could be something like, uh, you know, when I'm nervous before a webinar, or let's say the whole expression could be like, you know, when I'm nervous before a webinar, I really want some space to be myself. And then the request could be something like, would you be willing to sit next to me, to hold my hand and just listen to me for five minutes while I share about my nervousness? That could be the request. And as you can hear, it's quite long, right? It's quite, it's super specific. And making it so specific doesn't mean that someone is necessarily going to say yes to it. But it does mean that, that if they say yes or no, they, they actually know what they're going to say yes to. And that makes the chance that they say yes a lot higher. Because, because yeah, if you don't know what you're going to say yes to, it's a bit scary, right? Also, if someone tells you, like, I want you to love me, I want you to support me, it can be very overwhelming or, or heavy if you don't know what to do exactly and if you don't know what you're saying yes to. So this is partly about knowing to make it, um, that it's important to make it concrete, but it's also a little bit about daring. I discovered lately that quite often when, I, when I'm not like super specific, it's actually because I'm scared. It can be quite scary to say exactly like, you know, I want you to sit next to me, hold my hand and do this and this. I mean, what if they say no or... So, yeah, it's helpful sometimes to check yourself if that's maybe what's going on, that actually you know what you want, but it's just very scary to say it. So, yeah, that's my first tip. Um, I'm wondering now if I'm going to share the screen again. Um, I think I'm just going to go to the next one and then maybe later I will, I will share the screen again. So the next um, uh, letter is the U and it's, uh, it stands for under control. So this means that whenever I make a request to someone, I can only ask something that is in this person's control, that is in their power to do. So for example, say that I'm, I'm, I'm saying to someone, don't be ashamed. That could be my request, right? Don't be ashamed. Say that I'm, I'm in the bedroom with someone and this person has a bit of, is a bit shy about their body. And I'm, I'm telling them, don't be ashamed because it distracts me or something. This is very hard. If you ask someone to feel in a certain way, or to do, in this case, to not feel a certain way, it's, it's, it's impossible because we cannot control how we feel. You cannot tell someone like, don't be angry, don't be shy, don't be this, or, or be more cheerful, be less moody. It's, someone might actually say yes to this, like, okay, I will be less ashamed, but you probably will get disappointed because yeah, they cannot really control this. So again, I'm gonna go back to my need. Like what's actually my need when I say, don't be ashamed to someone in the bedroom. It could be something like that I want to be, I, want, I myself want to be supported in kind of a, a positive body image. I want support in that, I want inspiration in that. Okay, so if that's my need, I could maybe say something like, um, hey, how would it be for you if we go if we talk sometime out, outside of the bedroom and if we both mention what we actually like about our bodies. You know, that could be a way to, um, that, that is doable. Someone might still do, not want it or say no, but it's a doable thing. And maybe um, this is a little side tip, I guess, but um, sometimes when you find your need and you try to come up with a request, it can be that um, the need is a bit big. Like, for example, when it's about self-confidence, um, I'm trying to make a request, but whatever I think of, I don't really trust that it's gonna give me self-confidence because self-confidence is such a big need, it's such a big thing. How am I gonna get this in just one request? And that's also maybe a little bit the case with this body image. You know, I'm not going to change this person's body image just by chatting once about some positive things that we like about our bodies. 
And so if you notice this with yourself that, that you're a bit like, oh, but how am I going to meet that need, which is just one request, then, see, then think of it as taking one step in the direction of this need. So I'm going to take just one small, what, what could be one small step in the, in the direction of getting self-confidence or getting more love in my life or all these kind of huge things. Um, yeah, I hope that's clear. That, um, yeah, I wonder, did I want to say something else about that? Yeah, just that, take, take small steps. Mm, and then I'm just gonna show the, give you the overview for a second again. Um, let me see if that works. So we, we covered this concrete under control. And the third one is to make a positive request. So very often you also hear, I hear it a lot with parents to their children that they're going to tell them, tell someone else what not to do, you know, don't jump on the couch or don't eat that or, and the thing is that the way our brain works, it's, 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 um, it's, it's very hard to come up with something else when someone is talking about what they don't want. So I have a few examples. Um, let me see. Uh, wait a second, I need to. Um, yes. Yeah, so I made a few examples of, of how this happens. Um, instead of saying, stop looking at your phone all the time, you could be saying, would you look me in the eye while I'm sharing about my day? Or when someone is, actually I like this second example. If I'm saying, I really cannot take this music right now, someone doesn't know what I want. They might be putting on different music. Well, actually what I want is, is well, in this case, uh, for them to use their headphone or to play some instrumental music. Um, you're touching me too roughly. Would you caress me as soft as you can? It's, it's both more clear and also more, it will be less easily taken as criticism. You know, you're touching me too roughly. They might be a bit put off, but if I say, would you caress me as soft as you can? It's a lot, lot more inviting, a lot more fr yeah, friendly, I would say. Uh, and another one, please stop whining. Would you tell me how I can help you? Could be an alternative. And let me see if I can put this up a bit. I don't want to eat something greasy. Instead, I could say, I would love to eat something with a lot of veggies and some proteins. So this, is, this requires a, a bit more effort from you as the one who's making the request to wonder, you know, at, at first it might come like this, like, oh, I don't want this. I don't want this music. I don't want this food. I don't want this way of speaking. And it requires a, a bit of extra step to think, okay, but what, what is it concretely that I do want? So, yeah. If you want to have those examples later, I can maybe put them online or something. Um, let me see. Yes, number four is to always um, be aware that a request is in the now. So the I from Cupido stands for in the now. Um, and this is about the way humans work is that they can actually only say what they want right now. So whenever I make a request for the future to someone, I need to bear in mind that, um, for example, if I say, you know, do you want to go to the movies tomorrow? Someone can say yes, but it's uh, anything could happen to them before tomorrow. They could get in an accident or they could, anything could happen why, uh, which would make them not want to go to the movies anymore. So the whole concept of making a promise, I would say in NVC becomes a bit um, tricky. Like I would prefer to use the word intention. Like I have the intention to go with you to the movies tomorrow, but uh, I would like to have the freedom to kind of come back to it or to. 
and the way you can actually include that a little bit in your request it's this one is more about your 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 expectation when you make a request but you can put it also into kind of the way you phrase yourself by saying for example um you know i would like to go to travel with you to thailand do you think right now you would be up for that it becomes it gives the other person a bit more space a bit more relaxation maybe to say yes to something or to say like hmm, i'm about 50 percent sure like this is something i do a lot with you know some of my friends really live in the now and they they often change their mind about appointments i make with them so i've i now whenever i make a request to them when i say that to them like would you like to meet um next week then i might add like do you think like um how high is the chance that, that we're going to do this? Is it 50% or 90%? And if I know it's only 50%, I might say, okay, then I also invite someone else because then I know for sure there will be someone to go to the cinema or whatever. So yeah, this is, this is more about a, a certain consciousness actually to, um, to include when you make a request. And number five is uh, the D and it stands for duration. And this is about adding a duration to your request. This one doesn't always apply, but if it does, it's quite um, helpful to do this. For example, in instead of saying, would you be willing to listen to me? I would say, would you be willing to listen to me for 10 minutes? And the reason that is, this is super helpful is that um, if someone asks me, would you listen to me? I have no idea, like it could be for hours. And, and when someone starts sharing, I don't, and it's very emotional, I don't dare to go like halfway, like, hey, actually I'm a bit bored or I'm stressed about something else, or that's a bit tough. So it can be very helpful to, to add that, that specific timing. And um, there was something else I wanted to say about that. Yeah, it's also kind of tricky if, you, if you're the person who's sharing and, um, it's usually quite likely that, that you will share and share and go into your story and all of a sudden it's 20 minutes. So in order to, to kind of really honor the agreements, I usually set a timer. And I know this is very, a lot of people have resistance to this because it's, they think it's a bit formal or maybe the other person thinks it's weird. And um, yeah, if you, if you have the openness to try it, I, I've noticed that anyone I've tried it with was very happy because it's super relaxing, you know, like it's going to take 10 minutes, then the alarm is going to go. And then even then you can check again, like, oh, actually, I feel open to listen for 10 more minutes or you can kind of renegotiate. But it's, yeah, it's for me, it's like a lifesaver. I use it almost every day and it's it really helps, especially with my former boyfriend. Like I wanted lots of listening and very often he was willing to listen for five minutes. But if I would not have put a clock or if I would not have added the five minutes, he would have said no, I think like, yeah, at least 50% of the time. And these five minutes can be very valuable if someone is actually listening because they know it's going to take five minutes and they have this energy for five minutes. So yeah, this is really, really, um, it sounds like a small one, but it's for me, it's a big one. All right. So the last one, I will just, um, Go back again to the overview for a second. Um, let me see. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so we covered these, concrete, under control, positive, in the moment, duration. And the last one is openness. And this is also about um, your, how to say it, your attitude and not so much about the way you phrase yourself. And this is about being open to a no. Because uh, especially if you, if, you've, if you manage to, you know, find your need and you carefully crafted your perfect um, request and then someone is like uh, no 
<laughs> it can be quite uh, disappointing. And um, yeah, sometimes this, I, I used to have sometimes this thought like, oh, but if I make a perfect, you know, like observation feeling needs and a perfect request, then someone's going to say yes. But yeah, it depends obviously on more things, whether someone says yes. And um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's very helpful to, to realize that someone might still say no. And also that that's not the end of the, of the world. It's not the end of the dialogue. It's actually, I would almost say, kind of the beginning of a dialogue because when someone says no, it's, um, it's always because they also have a certain need because, because with your current request, this need is not met. And this is maybe a bit advanced, but if you, if you manage to find what is the need of this person, why they are saying no, you can together come up with a new request that meets both this person's need and your need. So this can be, yeah, this can be really the start of a dialogue, I would say. The no, the no is, doesn't need to be the end of the dialogue. And it can also be actually a way to, to get to know each other, like what is so important for this person that they say no to this specific request. Um, and one way to actually include this a bit more in the way you ask your requests could be to start with the words, um, how would it be for you? I also made a video about this. And um, just to say it very shortly, it's, it's um, when I say, for example, do you want to give me a massage? It's a yes or no question. And some people tend to automatically say yes when they actually don't really want it. Like they're just out of habit. And if I say instead, how would it be for you to give me a massage for half an hour, for example, they're more likely to kind of check themselves like, hmm, how would it be for me? Well, I'm a little bit tired, so 30 minutes might be a bit much. So that way you also um, help the other person actually to say no. And yeah, you want to do that because if they say yes, when they don't have an honestly full yes on the inside, it can create um, kind of expectations in them that you also will do stuff for them. It will create this, this um, how do you say that? Um, kind of depth that you have to do something back now as well because they sacrifice something for you. And this, this can become very tricky and create distance and conflict. And so this openness is very, very important, um, I would say. Um, yeah, I see that, that it's almost half an hour and I was going to share for half an hour. I've, I've, um, two very small less tips, how to start doing this. Um, what I find very helpful is to start, um, making requests according to this, this way and actually practicing MVC in general, like the four steps to do it with very small things. Like I, uh, I wouldn't recommend to start with, you know, the problems with your, parents or your partner which is always very um, sensitive and vulnerable but just with very small things and a, and a great way what was a great way for me was to do it via email so whenever I got an email and I, I, I had a certain need and a certain request I would practice with that because then I had some time to think about it and to look at the, the six ways to make it more more um, effective and I also had some time when someone said no to think about that so that was something that was helpful for me and maybe it's helpful for you as well. And one last thing that is also a little bit of a worry in me, like, like when you um, uh, hear about all these things that you need to do in order to make it good, um, that at some point you might become so overwhelmed that, you, that when you are with a certain person in a situation that you kind of yeah, retreat yourself and don't make any requests at all. So I want to really kind of um yeah support you in in like i would much prefer that you make a shitty request than that you don't make any request at all because yeah that would be a pity i think and you can always you know just sh say out loud whatever uh request comes to you and then afterwards you can still craft it you can still even together with the person you can say like i want something and i i don't know exactly what can you help me you know, I have this need and I want to make it concrete for you what I want, but I don't know it yet. So you can actually make a request about that to the other person to help you to make a good, good or 
whatever effective request. So that's, yeah, that would be my last tip. Like if you notice you start to freeze, then just throw away all these tips and just say whatever you want, whatever way it comes in you, because that's in the end, that's the most important that you just dare to say what you want for me. That's actually what I, what I wanted to share. I'm very open for questions. And maybe I want to ask first, because I think it's a little easy practice. If anyone has um, a suggestion for this case that I, that I brought in the beginning. So I, I want to, um, yeah, I want to do some sports again. I want to have some support in getting, um, yeah, some inspiration and some motivation for it. Um, is there anyone who, who has a request and that's, that is able to maybe apply the tips that I just shared? Uh, Chris uh, uh, wants to, uh, I think, uh, in the chat it was. Chris, if, if you want, you, you can unmute yourself or we can unmute you. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't matter to me if I'm speaking or in the chat box. Can she not see the chat box? Uh, yes, you can see the, the chat box. It, uh, I just wanted the others also to hear what, to, what you want to say. Okay. It, well, the chat said it went out to everyone. Um, so I'm not hearing a lot of the feelings piece, and it seems like the needs would, would come off the feelings piece. I'm sorry. It seems like the needs would come off. I didn't yeah. hear you. Yes, that's right. That's what I said. You did hear me properly. So you're, I'm not sure I, I fully get you. So you, you're wondering, um, can, you, can you rephrase yourself or, or share a bit more? Like, what what are your question? feelings about not exercising or not doing sports? Ah, okay, okay, okay. I, in the example that you gave as you were speaking just now and then also for this that you're asking, yeah, on, I'm not hearing feelings so much yeah. emphasized. Yeah. So my feelings, um, I feel a little demotivated, a little low in energy, a little bored. I would almost say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that give you clarity? Yeah. Well, I think that. To me, the needs come from the feelings, right? So you don't want to feel bored, right? You want to feel maybe energized or engaged. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, it yeah. helps, so it helps me hear more about your feelings to know what, where to go. Yeah. And is it clear enough for you now? I think Bye. so. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks for your question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anyone else who would like to either ask something or give a suggestion for my case? Can be both. Okay, happy. Unmute yourself. There we go. Well, I'm wondering, uh, you didn't really specify who you were making the request of. Did you want to help on making a request to yourself, to other people, to people who have disparaged you about your not doing sports? Or what, where, who are you trying to make yeah. a request to? For me, it could be, could be all of that. The only thing is I don't have a lot of money, so I, I, wouldn't, I couldn't make a request to some personal trainer or something. <laughs> but other than that, yeah, it could be to myself or to someone else. But I guess my need was a bit to get support. So I guess, yeah, my preference would maybe be to ask other people for something. Yeah. And what, what exactly do you want? Uh, maybe specify what you want other people to say or do in order to help you. I haven't heard that yeah. specify the request yet. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking in the direction of maybe um, either asking someone to join me or to write something on Facebook that someone, some people might be, um, yeah. I don't know, sh share some motivational words or I don't, something in those directions could be, could be helpful. Would you like to hear some motivational words from me? Sure. My sign. About sport. This. Wake up. 
kick ass, repeat. <laughs> this is right next to my workout space over here. I look at this every day and it kicks my ass a bit and gets me going. You know what? Actually, I have a request for you now. Okay. Would you be willing to take a picture of you with that sign next to your head? Like this? Uh, yeah, you don't have to do it right now, but but whenever you have time, uh, I, I think it, I think it would motivate me if I would look at that. Uh, okay, I'll do it before like this. sports. Are <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, this this actually I didn't work out at all until, <coughs> and uh, having this sign next to my workout routine, uh, I do it at home. Having uh -huh. this kind of just kicked my ass a couple times. So. <laughs> cool. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Actually, I mean, I'm laughing and it's in a way it's funny, but it's, it's actually meeting my need for support right now that, that the, just the idea that a lot of some people are kind of uh, help, yeah, helping me or brainstorming with me now. So thanks. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I, I find that having it that in my apartment, it, it does motivate me. It does having a sign because you can't get, always get support from people every day, especially I, I do it by myself, but having yeah. a sign it does kind of help. Hmm. Thanks. Are there any other questions or ideas? I do see some things in the chat, so I'm going to have a look because I didn't, maybe we already covered them, but. Um, yeah, Caroline says, this is just addressing the request phase. Yeah, that's, that was. I don't know if that's a question, but that was indeed the intention of the webinar. Could you? I think it was uh, it was her reply uh, to to what uh, Chris or something. Oh. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if you have any questions, uh, just just tell me in between. I I just realized something else that might be useful uh, when it comes to requests. It's um, that I never know beforehand whether a request is going to meet my needs. So I was just, you saw me now being a bit surprised, like, oh, actually, it's actually meeting my need for support, what I'm doing now. And so sometimes I have people saying uh, like, oh, but yeah, but I can try this, but I don't know if it's going to meet my needs. But that's by definition, you almost by definition, you don't know beforehand. So it's always a, a, yeah, a matter of you know, trying out your request and see if it actually meets your need. And if it doesn't, yeah, then you, you just make another try. Yeah, I just wanted to add that. I hear someone asking, is clarity most important while making a request? Um, yeah, I would say everything I shared is important, but yeah, I guess clarity is, is very, very crucial. Yeah, both if you're, making the request to someone else and when you're making it to yourself. Yeah. I got a lot out of it. I, I've never seen it broken down in this way and I'm trying to make a very important communication with my girlfriend here soon. And so I'm finding it very, I was applying this to that. So I was very grateful for that. And I, I look forward to more of these sessions. I, I really enjoy the style that you bring to this, probably because it reminds me of my girlfriend. Thank you. I don't know if you could hear that. <laughs> Nade, would you, is there anybody else? Yeah, I'm reading a lot in the chat, like, ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some Chris says that I agree on the clarity and detail. There are some people I just give up on because they are so reactive. So this is helpful. Yeah. And someone says, I'm looking forward to apply NVC again. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it gave me renewed hope to apply NVC again. Nice. I like to read all this. <laughs> hmm. Okay, this, this, uh, this is the end of the workshop. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, if you like Marianne, just to uh, go to her website, cupofempathy.com. Marianne, I'm, am I right? Yeah. Cupofempathy.com. Also on YouTube, uh, her channel, Cup of Empathy. 
and I think you also have a Facebook page, Marianne, if I'm right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the same so, so you can you can um, follow her and um, go to her website and see details about her future workshops. I don't know if you have something online, Marianne, or um, yes. Um, oh, you mean if I have any other online workshops? Yes, for people to know to to come to your uh, workshop. No, not at the moment. No, I just have every other Tuesday a new video. So people can see that. And if people live in the Netherlands, then uh, I have every month a workshop on Sunday. So they can find this on my website as well. 